We now want to talk about resistance in a little bit more detail. And resistance occurs, or uh, resistance happens any time the flow of the charges are impeded. Okay. Now, uh, there is some natural resistance within a wire. Okay. So if you think of a, a microscopic view of a wire, and let's say this end is connected to uh, the positive, uh, let's say this end is connected to the negative terminal, and this end is connected to the positive terminal. And so we have positive charges that are free to roam. And again, in the real, in the real wire, it's the electrons that are moving. But again, the convention is that the positive charges are moving uh, in the uh, definition of current. And in a perfect conductor, in a perfect conductor, these charges are going to move uh, through the wire from the t positive terminal toward the negative terminal. And they're just going to be moving through the wire without any, any impedance whatsoever. But wires, of course, are made up of atoms, right? And so there are uh, blocks and, and different things that the, the charges, the individual charges, can bump into and run into and interact with. And so what actually happens is that wires, even though uh, most of your met metallic wires, things like copper and iron and nickel, are really, really good conductors, there is some inherent resistance within the wire. Now, over very short distances, and by short I mean things on the order of maybe yards or shorter, okay, something on the order of a yard or shorter, is going to have exceedingly small resistance, and in practice, uh, for most of our basic experiments, uh, that resistance can be thought of as being zero in those uh, short, short wires. Um, but if, if there is some natural resistance due to, let's, let's make some at, let's put some atoms in here. So as these charges are flowing through, they might bump into these atoms and things, and that's going to slow the rate down. That, uh, rate is going to be slowed down due to the natural resistance. Uh, it would stand to reason that the more atoms there are for the charges to bump into, the more the resistance. Well, how do I get more atoms for them to bump into? I can do that one of two ways. Um, but the easiest way is to get a longer wire. Okay, I'm going to get a longer wire. Or I could also make my wire thicker. But it turns out, if I make my wire thicker, what I'm actually doing is giving my uh, charges a bigger, wider path to move through. And so what happens is that the overall resistance is proportional to the length of the wire, and it's proportional to the inverse of the area, the cross-sectional area. So if I think of my wire as having circular ends, this cross-sectional area A. Right, would, would represent the thickness. And so to move from these proportionalities to an equation, what I have to do is insert a proportionality constant. And we call that proportionality constant rho, the Greek symbol rho. And this is the equation for the internal resistance or the natural resistance of a wire. Okay, So a regular wire is going to have this particular equational dependence. Um, it's going to be linearly proportional to the length. The longer my wire, the more things there are to bump into, the slower the charges are going to flow. And it's also going to be inversely proportional to the area. Now this rho, this proportionality constant, rho, is called the resistivity. Okay, it's called the resistivity. Now, one thing that we did not mention last uh, video, okay, uh, I did not mention two things, and I need to clear those up very, very quickly. We said that current is equal to delta Q over delta T. In units, this is equal to charge, charge, per time, 
and that's coulombs per second. Okay, um, in SI units, that's coulombs per second. And coulombs per second, let me make that a better O if I can, coulombs per second also has the units of amps. Okay, so coulombs per second has the units of amps. Um, likewise, all right, R is equal to delta V over delta, or, or uh, over I rather. And so this is going to be volts per amps. And the unit of volts over amps is called the ohm. Okay, that is called the ohm or ohms. Okay, actually there shouldn't be a, an apostrophe there. Um, ohms, okay, just ohms. And so what that means for the resistivity, I need ohms on this side of my equation, right? I need ohms on the left-hand side, and I have length, which is gonna be a unit of distance, and that's gonna be measured in meters, and my cross-sectional area is gonna be meters squared. And so what that is going to do is my meters are gonna cancel out, and so rho, uh, whoops, uh, rho is going to have units of ohms per meter. Okay, it's going to have uh, units of ohms per meter. Okay, now the symbol that we use for ohms is the Greek symbol omega, capital omega. All right, so that is the symbol for ohms. We'll use A for amps. We'll use V for volts. And omega for ohms, okay? So the units on rho, uh, the units are going to be ohms per meter, okay? So this proportionality constant, uh, each individual substance that you might use in a conductive experiment to uh, move current over certain voltage ranges is going to have a fairly consistent resistivity. Um, however, um, that resistivity actually does turn out to be temperature dependent. And if the resistivity is temperature dependent, then so therefore is the res overall resistance. And it turns out from experiments, we can say that the resistivity rho is equal to some set resistivity at a given temperature multiplied by the quantity one plus alpha times T minus T naught, right? So if I know what my temperature initially is of my wire or my conductive substance that I'm using to build my circuit with, whatever this temperature is initially, I can use its initial resistivity at that temperature and use this equation then, if I raise the temperature to some higher temperature T, I can use this equation to predict what the uh, resistivity is at that higher temperature. And this coefficient alpha is called the temperature coefficient of resistivity. Okay, um, now the values for both rho and alpha, all right, are given in table 17.1 in your text. So if you want to investigate those values, uh, that's where you can find them. Um, they're not going to be terribly important for our purposes moving forward in future chapters, but it does uh, pay to know... Um, something about them, where they come from, and where natural resistance and wires comes from, especially if you're planning on being an electrical engineer, okay? Um, we will leave that there for this video, 
and in the next video we will talk about power. We will see you then.